Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is the second generation Intel Compute Stick. It's a tiny computer that you can plug into the HDMI port of your television or monitor to run Windows applications or other operating systems on a big screen. It's basically a tiny computer that you can hold in one hand, but it has memory, processor, RAM, everything that you need to, to run software. It's the second generation model, as I mentioned. It has a slightly faster processor, significantly better uh, wireless performance, and it has two full-sized USB ports, including this USB 3.0 uh, speedier port. And that makes it easier to plug in a mouse and a keyboard at the same time without using a hub or resorting to Bluetooth accessories or other wireless accessories. It's also got this uh, micro USB uh, port, but you use that for power, power button, an SD card slot, and that's about it. Under the hood, it has an Intel Atom Cherry Trail processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, and you can see there's a little fan in there to keep things from getting too hot. And then on the end is this HDMI connector. So let's go ahead and take it to the back of the display. And I'll show you what it looks like when you plug it in. So it comes with this little adapter in case you have a uh, TV that's positioned in such a way that you can't just plug it right in. It might uh, scrape up against the wall, but let's go ahead and plug it in just so you can see how it works. So that's in. I'm going to plug in a USB hub and the power cable. And that's it. So let's go ahead and adjust this so you can see. It should be powering up shortly. Over here you can see we can press F2 to get to the BIOS or UEFI. F10 to get to a boot menu and so on. Uh, from here I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put my hand over the screen while I log in. to Windows. And now we've got a smudge on the screen. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like it's gone. Okay, so we've got a full Windows desktop environment here. Um, you could load Ubuntu or other operating systems. I've had a little bit of difficulty getting that to work with this model, whereas with the first generation model, it was a little easier and uh, had a little bit of help from Ian Morrison, who's been uh, porting Ubuntu. Uh, he has managed to get Ubuntu to run on this version, but it's, um, it's an imperfect experience because the HDMI audio output isn't working properly. Um, I've got Steam installed on here and is doing a quick little update in the background here. But the wireless performance, you can see we're connected to a network. And I'm in the third floor office of my house, the router's down on the first floor. With the first generation Intel Compute Stick, I just couldn't use the wireless in this room at all. Uh, it had to be sort of down on the first floor right next to the router. This one works just fine with that faster 802.11ac Wi-Fi. It also has a better antenna arrangement, which makes it possible to use Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, devices at the same time. So uh, just to show that we are connected to the internet here, I'm gonna go ahead and open a couple of pages. and put them in multiple windows. In terms of general performance, you can find more details and benchmarks and, and other information at lilliputing.com in the full version of this review. Um, it's a little bit faster than the original Compute Stick, but not a lot faster. Uh, the biggest limitation, I think, is the two gigabytes of RAM on top of the relatively low power processor means that um, if I want to have two or three web pages open in Google Chrome at once, that's fine. If I wanted to do much more than that, it starts to get a little bit sluggish here. And um, in general, you can see, you know, it's loading things relatively quickly but it slows down if I try to use it for serious work. So as a blogger, I tend to sort of keep open multiple windows, maybe have five or six browser tabs on one screen and then do some writing on the other screen. And it can start to feel a little bit sluggish when it's doing those things. But if you want to use it for playing video, that works pretty nicely. As a small business owner, you know things have a way of moving fast. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputin, and this is not a Chromecast audio. It looks like one, but it's called an AudioCast, and it's a device that has a similar function. So streaming video from sites like YouTube and Netflix, not a problem. Uh, local video, it depends on the applications that you use. I've uh, noticed that if I try to use, for instance, VLC to play certain media files, um, I have a couple of H.265 videos here on a USB thumb drive that I sort of keep for testing purposes, and 
they all sort of struggle in the desktop version of VLC here. So we've got a little bit of a slideshow action going on there. But if I try the same video using the Movies and TV app that's included in Windows, it works just fine. So this is a 2160p or a 4K video. Playing in full screen now at 30 frames per second without really dropping many frames. Likewise, when I tried using Kodi Media Center version 15.2 gave me a little bit of difficulty, but then I upgraded to the release candidate for version 16, which has hardware accelerated video support based on a recommendation for somebody who saw an earlier version of this video review. And uh, having switched from one to the other seems to have made a huge difference. So now if I try to load up those same videos here, they work pretty well. Skip ahead a little bit. So thanks to the hardware accelerated video, it works pretty nicely there. Now you could also stream content from a shared network drive, which can come in handy if you don't want to use up all the space that's on the device. And that's, that's important because there's only 32 gigabytes of built-in storage on the compute stick. I'm just going to go ahead and mute this so you can hear me talk. Um, there's only 32 gigabytes of built-in storage and only 19 or so, 19 or 20 is available when you first start using the device. So you're going to want USB storage or shared network drives or other ways to sort of access remote storage uh, like I'm doing here, which is streaming from a shared network drive, if you wanted to be able to sort of get the most out of this device as a media player. Uh, if you're just streaming content from online, the amount of built-in space it might not be an issue. But if you're using it to stream lots of local media, it can be more of a problem. So you can see that uh, we've got sort of this DVD file playing and video playback in general works pretty well. Now, there are other things you can do as well. Uh, while Intel sort of imagines most consumers using this for media streaming type applications or some light web browsing, you can also load up Office software. So I've got LibreOffice uh, set up here. I'm gonna go ahead and open up LibreOffice Writer and Calc, so we can do spreadsheets and text documents. And while I'd say this computer is a little bit slow to recommend using as a primary work machine or even a primary home machine, it's, uh, it's sort of the versatility of being able to run lots of different types of uh, applications. So I can compose documents, edit spreadsheets, And if I was traveling, for instance, and didn't want to carry a laptop around with me, I could plug the uh, compute stick into a monitor or a TV or something in my hotel room or when I'm traveling to a different workplace. Uh, you could sort of have all of your files and applications and data on this device that you can slide into your pocket and take it from home to work and so forth. So it's, uh, it's kind of nice for that. Now, later in the year, Intel's going to be releasing a more powerful model that actually has a Core M processor for higher performance. They recommend that version for 4K video playback, for digital signage and other commercial applications. But as we've seen here, with the right software, you can actually even get 4K video to work just fine on this model. Uh, last thing I'm gonna do is show you a little bit of video gaming. It's not really the sort of device that you'd use for high-end games, but Jet Set Radio, which is a game that was uh, available for free from Sega the day that I uh, uh, started to shoot these videos, is an older title that was designed originally for the Sega uh, Dreamcast, and it works pretty well as long as you keep the uh, graphics reasonable. So here it is at 720p resolutions. If you set it to a 1080p screen and it takes up full screen, it doesn't play nearly as well or as smoothly, but under these conditions I can, uh, I can actually get the game to play. Now, I'm not very good at this game, so uh, sort of bear with me here for a second.
that I mentioned I'm not very good at this game. <laughs> There we go. So, overall, it looks pretty good, plays pretty well, and I'm using sort of an Xbox-style controller that's plugged into a uh, USB hub. So again, with the two USB ports, you can plug some things directly into the uh, computer if you wanted to. Uh, exiting this game is causing a little bit of difficulty here. Let's go ahead and right-click and close. Uh, so you can plug multiple devices, including a keyboard and a mouse in, and that can come in handy, especially if you're just booting the device and you want to have access to both a keyboard and a mouse at the same time, because uh, otherwise it can be sort of difficult to hit the F2 button or the F10 button if you're trying to get into the BIOS or the other settings. So that's a quick look at some of what you can do with the second generation Intel Compute Stick. It sells for about $150 with an Intel Atom X5 uh, Z8300 processor, 2 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, and Windows 10 software. It's Windows 10 32-bit software, so if you wanted 64-bit, the system can handle it, but it comes with a 32-bit version. Um, in addition to all the things that we looked at, you can run Windows Store applications, so you might have better performance uh, with games if you did that. If you were to try sort of more bleeding-edge games, it's just kind of a non-starter. Although you might be able to stream games over a home network uh, using Steam in-home streaming or other sort of uh, activities like that. Um, it's been pointed out to me that uh, general performance of things like web browsing might be better if you use the Microsoft Edge browser. But for me, I think the, the point of this is that unlike a dedicated streaming device like the... Um, Chromecast or the Amazon Fire TV stick, um, the appeal to this is that you can run the same applications that you're used to running on your primary machine. And if you're not a fan of the Edge browser and you want to use Chrome, you can. You just sort of have to temper your expectations. It can do everything a computer can do, because it is a computer, it just does it maybe not as fast as some other modern machines. It has the sort of hardware that you would expect to find in something like a low-cost Windows notebook with an Intel Atom processor or a tablet with an Intel Atom processor. It just doesn't have the screen, the keyboard, some of those other features. Uh, you have to supply those yourself. So who is this for? Well, to find out more details about that, you might want to listen to our LPX Show podcast featuring Bruce Patterson from Intel, sort of talking about who they see as the target market and who's buying this sort of device. Uh, the general idea is that as consumers looking for a more versatile media streaming solution than you get from a Roku or a Chromecast, but also uh, it's, it's aimed at business customers looking for certain enterprise uses. And then it's, uh, it's also sort of a hacker-friendly device, as Ian Morrison uh, or Linuxium has pointed out, and he's also featured in that LPX podcast. You can find more details at lpxshow.com or check out the full review of this at lilliputing.com. I'm Brad Linder with Lilliputing.